Saints, it's that time again, and we are right here on Go Yard. I'm having a hard time here and here. Let me get that turned up. There we go. How are you, Dr. Angel? I am well. How are you? Oh, very good because of our team, our Rays. They are doing great. <laughs> now, yeah, they dropped the last two, but those were extenuating circumstances, so, you know. The extenuating circumstance was they lost. <laughs> but, yeah, well, it happened. <laughs> but you know what? They're doing so good. And tonight they play in Seattle, 10 o'clock. I got to stay up. Oh, wow. 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 Okay. I know. Yeah, I'll probably doze, I, I would imagine. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Our Rays are doing great. This this show is named after baseball. It's Go Yard, which means hitting a home run in life. And that's what we're all about. And when our Rays hit those home runs over the fence, whoa, it's, it's a pretty good day. Cool. It's a great day. So if you're not a Rays fan out there, think about it because they are number one in baseball right now. So uh, there's people that are you know, trying to edge them out of that position, but... We, we have faith they're going to come out strong in Seattle. So All right. Yeah, it's All right. good. So welcome tonight. We're part two of a series we started last week. When to let go. What is that? Ooh, what does so, that mean, Dr. Angel? Well, you know, last week we really talked a lot about the forgiveness factor. Yes, we did. Um, and what, you know, what forgiveness means, what it looks like, who it benefits, and how right. forgiveness is really not about the other person. It's really about us mm -hmm. letting go and the person not owing us anymore. Exactly, which is the true definition of forgiveness anyway, mm -hmm. right? So, um, and so we talked about that, but tonight we want to take it a step further about when you change the dynamics between you and someone else. Oh, and it changes right. everything. You know, I've been dealing with this a lot in the counseling room, you know, uh, a lot of families or relationship counseling, marriage counseling, whatever. And one person is more willing to change and the other person doesn't want to change. Here's the thing. If one person changes in a relationship, it changes the dynamics of that a complete right. relationship. Yeah, it does. And uh, yeah, we're going to talk about that tonight mm -hmm. in detail. Uh, if you're new to Go Yard, we are almost ready in September to finish our seventh year. I know. Doesn't, doesn't seem possible. Starting an eighth year. Um, and you can go to our website, which is not caught up, I will admit that, because mm -hmm. of of uh, my crazy life, but that's goyard2014.org and you can find a lot of shows there with titles. Yes. Uh, with C, because we've had all these years of doing series, because what starts out to be one show like last week usually turns out to be a series like this week. Sure, right? and that's because we take a topic, we get in, we dive deep, Yeah. and, and we break it apart. And then the more we do that show on it, like last week, we go, oh, there's more to this. Wait a minute, but yeah. there's more. Right. And so uh, we're excited to do part two, and we have no idea what's coming right now. Why do we do that? We're, they're getting it fresh off the press. I, I know. We call it wing it specials, right? Yes, we do. Um, and, and why would we do that? I mean, it, because with you, you are PhD, licensed mental health counselor. You have an active practice two years and a lot of patients, and you're growing, expanding, a staff, things are really booming for you. My years of experience come through pastoring many, many years, too many to count, and counseling many, many people through the years, and um, all of that. And so that's how this show kind of developed, because we both had an interest in counseling yes. and trying to help people see problems that caused them relationship issues, things from their past, on and on. So that's kind of how all this developed seven and yes, almost seven is. years ago. Right it now. is. It absolutely is. And, you know, um, I think over the years, a lot of these shows have helped a lot of people. So right. and I, that's why we're here. So go to our website, goyard2014.org, and you will find a lot of shows from the past. Again, not anything real recent because that's my fault, but uh, you will find those and uh, they have titles and things. The one that sticks out to me, and I mentioned it last week, was Red Flag Blindness. Yes, that a was a good A couple years one. ago, I think in 2019 or maybe even 2018, we did three or four part series on the red flags in relationships that cause us to stand up and go, uh or sit up and, well, no, that should cause us that to stand should, up, right? but often get ignored. That often get ignored. So that's a good series to go back and look at, and there's a lot of them there. So let's dive right into this, Dr. Angel, because I believe that when people get to be adults or even, let's say, young adults, 
uh, they are still living the product of everything that's happened up to that point in their life, right? Absolutely. Okay. Why is that? I mean, you don't get a, a clean slate when you turn 18 or 21. Well, and our whole life are really the culmination of all of our experiences and how yes. we interpret it, filter it, what we learn from it, if we grow through it. Like, that's how we, we that's why we're never the same. Like, we're, right. we should be constantly growing, becoming, and emerging as we go through life. Yeah, we should be. Yeah, we should be. And a lot of times people get hung up in areas of their life where they want to just keep going back and reliving the past, right? Oh, sure. It happens a lot. Or um, I don't know. I've known a lot of people that have done this. You're in a relationship with someone. You break up. There's all kinds of issues. You're apart a couple of years, and then they don't seem so bad after a couple of years of being away from them. I and suddenly you're right back with them, right? Absolutely. I mean, don't you see that? Because see it, it was a comfortable place. It was oh, comfort. Yeah. We know it. We go right. back because we played the field a little bit and realized it wasn't as green as we thought it would be. And right. And we forget those things that why we left that relationship in the first place. We didn't do the work. We didn't do the healing. And now we're going to kind of go back and hope to make it work hope again. That it's okay. But here's the thing. The same things that happened before are most likely going to happen again. Do you hear that ever in counseling? Oh my gosh. Yes. Because I think it's a common human trait to want to go back to something mm -hmm. that was comfortable. Oh, I remember that wasn't that bad. That was okay. Let me try that again. Yes. Right. Yes. But the problem is so insanity is the, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results, right? Absolutely and we talk about that a lot on this show because a human nature tends to do that. We just go back. Okay. It'll be okay this time. You know? Yeah. We kind of write a merry go round a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. We, we really do. do. And, and we think it's supposed to be different and then we get disappointed and angry and frustrated and depressed when it's not. And I think a lot of times when we're going back around, if, whether it's a friendship or a personal relationship or whatever it is, people that have known us before know how to punch our buttons or know how to say the right things, right? Sure. To get back in your good graces. Yeah, we call that the bait. Like they kind of know oh, how bait. to throw out the bait. They, they throw out the you bait. Know, it's kind of like fishing. They know how to throw out the bait <laughs> and like reel you in. Right. You know, because they're familiar. You're familiar. You're, they know what works. Right. And so, uh, but the title of this is when to let go, because I think a lot of times people do go back for a second trip around the merry-go-round or a third or a fourth, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. I recently met somebody who had been married to the same person three different times. So, I mean, it's like. It happens. And it, and it, happens. it happens. And and this stuff doesn't just happen in romantic relationships. Like it happens in friendships. It happens in, with jobs. I have people, oh, I left this job. It was toxic. I went and worked other places. Oh, I'm going back to that. That toxic place wasn't so bad after all kind right. of mentality. But and sometimes it's a good decision to go back. Sure. Sometimes it is. But a lot of times it's the same toxicity you left. You just right. forgot. You just forgot. Yeah. Okay. So I, I'm really interested in pursuing what happens as we're born into a family. Of course, everybody's family dynamics is different. Absolutely. There's no standard way that everybody is grows up. Nope. They just don't. They, no. It's all different. I mean, and those dynamics are different <sighs> even between siblings yes. born with the same parents. Oh, my gosh, like, yes. Very much like you can take two, three, four, whatever the siblings are, and interview them separately, and you're going to get a complete different perspective. Oh, totally. Um when I was 10, my parents were called to the mission field in Central America. And so we left the United States but right when I was 11. And so my sisters were like eight and five. And now, this many years later, I have this wonderful set of memories and life experiences. But I was 11 on up, right? right. They were younger and neither of them feel like I do. Um, in fact, my middle sister always would take every opportunity to say that, she really wished she, that had never happened to her, you know? And yet to me, it was the best thing that could have ever happened to me all those years, sure. of, you know, in another country learning uh, and all of that, but that's not the same. And they were in the same household. Uh, we were all same, raised yeah, together. Same experiences, same parents, right. same everything. And that's how it works. So it's, you know, our experience of our family is unique to each of us. It is, isn't it? It really and is. So, and even twins, because I have twin granddaughters. Mm -hmm. My sister has twin, twin granddaughters. And they are different, and they are experiencing life different from the, each the other, even though they're both identical. And that happens. Right. So 
with that being said, our experience is unique. It's our unique. family dynamics, our interpretation of it, um, and how it molds us is unique to each person. Okay, but people in our immediate circle, let's say, or relatives or close friends or work or whatever, they love to give advice about how we should handle a given situation, even though they're not in that situation with us, right? Very a family much so. member loves to give advice, right? Yes, very much so. I hear this often. And, and often it's based on these fallacies or these myths that families pass down about how relationships should work within this oh, okay. extended family or family dynamic too. Right. But yeah, they want to step and say, oh, well, you should do this or you should do that. And, you know, there's one thing to say, oh, I would, you know, if I were you, I'd advise trying this, but give them the opportunity. But that's not how it's presented. It's a you should. Oh, yeah. And I think in different cultures, the oldest generation has quite a say so a lot of times, mm -hmm. right? Not always, but I mean, I've no, seen it many a, times. A lot of them, yeah, they do. There's and a hold they have on, you know, they want the kids to behave a certain way or whatever. And, and not even when they're kids, when those kids become adults and have right. families and make their own life choices. And that can come down to careers, who they uh, who they choose to partner up with in life, if they have kids, if they don't have kids, what jobs they work, all those things. Sometimes the older generation wants to be able to have their say and input on. Right. Yeah. So all of those things come together. And the other thing I want to talk about when we are young is we learn from behavior of others around us, I think, so much, we learn what is acceptable, what is not, what is tolerated, what is confronted. Mm -hmm. Do you want to go with that? Well, we do. And we learn that not from the words that people tell us, it's, but the behaviors behavior. we observe and the <laughs> right? people we live with. Right. What do they tolerate? How do they act when they're angry? What do they do when their feelings are hurt? How do they express emotion? And we learn how to do it based on what they're doing. And we realize usually at a young age that we are expected to handle it a certain way, right? Yes. Whatever it is. Yes, it is. And, and you'll know, see that a lot of times those traits will just kind of go down that family line of, you know, that's how we've learned to handle our relationships because that's... Is that okay? Not if it's not healthy. Okay. How do you define whether it's healthy or not, Dr. Angel? Well, I mean, I don't think that's a singular definition. I think there's a lot of attributes that contribute to making something healthy or not. Um, and one of them is, does it have healthy boundaries? Okay. Another one of them is, do you have the freedom and flexibility to be who you are and authentic to yourself while allowing others the freedom to, to be themselves as well? Like those are some of those attributes. Can you say no? Do you feel guilty when you say no? Okay. Um, so we're looking at some of those dynamics. Um, but there's many dynamics in that healthy line. So I don't, I want, I don't want to just like give it this very static definition. So. We've had, we've done series on boundary setting, mm -hmm. right? Why? And can you define that? Because you just brought it up. I think it really goes along with when to say no be, or when to let go. Right. Because sometimes that is your, the boundary you've set and somebody has crossed it repeatedly in whatever form of behavior that might be, mm -hmm. cheating on a partner, um, whatever, stealing mm -hmm. from someone, uh, Lying, using betraying. drugs right. behind their back, uh, drunk all the time, and whatever those boundaries that we have in our minds. But a lot of people don't talk about their boundaries. They don't say this is a boundary, right? Well, you're, you're correct. A lot of people, first of all, a lot of people really don't have real defined boundaries, right? You know, yeah. that's one of the first things I always assess in, in, in counseling is like to see where their lines are. And I usually get a lot of really confused looks when I start going there. Um, but, and they may have these unspoken boundaries. So they're kind of expecting people to just know that's the line they're not to cross. So, and we can't have unspoken boundaries either. Like that's healthy boundaries are clear. Healthy boundaries are known. Healthy boundaries are, you know, they're breathable and flexible, but yet um, they guide our life. They're for protection. They keep us safe in our relationships, emotionally, physically, and help us to take responsibility for what's ours and not take responsibility for what's not ours. Exactly. But how about the relationship, marriage, whatever it might be, where one person assumes 
because maybe you know when they got together they said yeah no we don't believe in cheating we're not going to cheat on each other and one of them starts cheating and 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 really when they're found out then they're very defensive well you never said that that was a problem or you know oh sure that can happen don't or... you hear things like that i mean surely you do sure counseling. i hear that all the time and, and <laughs> definitely and then they might try to say oh well you know the kids or we need to stay together the church or our family what would our family think what would your mother think like they kind of try and manipulate their way back um into this huge betrayal and make an excuse for it betrayal. well if you good word if you give me if you were giving me what i needed this wouldn't have happened like i hear that a lot too yeah, yeah. and they they kind of flip that script and like that's why we have to talk about what our boundaries are. We have to know what our boundaries are and, and be able to talk mm -hmm. about what those boundaries are mm -hmm. um, so that we know where those lines are with each other. But here's what happens in these family units that aren't functioning healthy is that not only do we not have these boundaries, um, we have these invisible boundaries that can change and we're supposed to second guess them all the time. But we have this thought process that certain people in the family unit can do whatever it is they want to do. Right. And it's okay and it's to okay. have to forgive them or you have to stay in relationship with them. You have to, that's your fill in the blank. Well, 40s and 50s and probably before that also, it seemed culturally that, have you ever seen the series Mad Men? I did watch uh, the advertising. That, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that was basically set in the fifties. Mm -hmm. Right. And the culture then was the man could, they, they smoked and drank right there in their office all the time. Oh, yeah, constantly. Absolutely. They were drunk all day long working, but, but they also could do whatever they want, have mm -hmm. affairs, do whatever they want. And the little wife at home was just supposed to keep cranking out the kids and, and making the meals, exactly. doing the laundry. Right. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of a, cultural norm back then more so i think even than it is now i mean women have in a way have really taken on more of their own say so than they oh, did sure. back women then. have had a lot of independence i mean you're talking yes. back then i mean a, a doctor wouldn't even talk to a woman they would talk to her husband right a yes. woman couldn't have a credit card unless her husband approved it like, right so there was a lot of um oppression there but but we still have so and we talk about that today and it seems so archaic right but yeah it's probably still in a way going on it still in, goes a on in a lot of, of family ways. dynamics and a lot and a lot of dynamics it absolutely yes. does with this thought that if you share a last name or if you share a bloodline there's this thing called unconditional relationship okay all right that, that uh, we have and if unconditional you love explain and, that again if you have the same last name. In other words, it could be a family member, not family somebody member, you're married so to. If we, you know, our name makes us family or our bloodline makes us family. Whatever it is that we tie us, that this is our family, we have this, like, unspoken belief that's that we have this unconditional relationship, meaning it doesn't matter what any of these people do. Right. You have to stay in relationship with them and love them and honor them and be a part and, of and, your life. And, and bend over backwards for them? Yes. Yes, when they need you, you're there. Right. Yeah. And so this is causing people a lot of stress and distress in their lives. Yeah. And they're not healthy. Right. They're smothering. And it's not, there is, no, in the human realm, there is no unconditional relationship. Every relationship should have conditions. That's the boundary. Yeah. I've noticed in uh, the generation that my sisters and I, our children, the 10 of them, um, there were eight boys and two girls. So the the dads and of course my niece she's wonderful and my daughter but the eight guys are so different than the generation before they all have daddy backpacks mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. with you know diapers wipes bottles you know they you know my son walks in the door and he's got his da daddy backpack on and he's ready to do whatever has to be done and these guys i mean they're in their 30s you know and they are their dads and they're proud of it and they change diapers and they get up in the night you know things uh, are different than they were back when i had my kids oh absolutely i mean things have progressed in that way and we do and it's a good thing we do see it fathers is a good thing. taking yes. much more active role in parenting and with the relationship of their kids i mean i can't tell you the number of uh, people that i get in counseling that came from the generation where fathers were not involved they earned the bacon and that was their role and that's right. the line that the hurts that they feel from that lack of relationship or feeling not loved or not valued or not whatever. The wife, you mean? 
or the no the kids of, oh the kids yes, that feel that, that way their because their dad engaged. was detached exactly and not engaged mm -hmm. and yeah i think that was a cultural thing sure, you it was know? a generational thing it was it was expected it, it was, was expected yeah you know it, it was confusing because i mean i can even remember because like when i had my kids it was starting to shift a little but mm -hmm. that was not how it was like i mean i remember being nine months pregnant and my in-laws coming to visit and i had with my middle kid so i had a little one a one-year-old running around and um i was sick when i was pregnant and he came over and expected me to get up to go get him a drink oh my god because gosh. the woman has to serve oh yeah so wow. that was the expectation of right. that culture. And don't you think that there's carryovers to that mm -hmm. still, mm -hmm. right, in our culture that, and I, there's more and more women in the workplace and all of that. But last year with COVID, the women had to really not be able to go back to work because they had to stay home and take care of their kids because of lack of daycare and things like that. Sure, I mean, it things wasn't Things changed available. a lot last year for a oh, while. Yes. And it's a, I think it's been a great change that yeah. we've had. We do need, kids need to have both of their parents and relationships with their parents. Like those are really important things. And, and I don't want to judge the previous generations right. based on yeah. what we know now. We just, we didn't know what no. we know now. No, things are different. When yeah. you know better, you do better. Right. Well, that's true. That's you know, true. so, but sticking with that, I think we still have kept these archaic beliefs about this unconditional family relationship and that's what we want to get back to because mm -hmm. yeah it's different but we have expectations that it should be a certain way right yes and so it's very hard for us to say this relationship isn't working and yes. we're going to talk more about that here in the second part of this show and we're glad you're joining us tonight on go yard you can call in if you'd like to comment or we have facebook up and running and so you can put comments there if you also want to do that and the call-in number is 727-441-3000 and uh it's uh really been raining here this afternoon yeah, hasn't perhaps. it uh so hope you're doing good wherever you might be but we'd love to have your input so uh, let us hear from you and we'll be right back don't go anywhere Entertaining and informative radio for the Sunshine State. Dr. Angel Falzoni specializes in a variety of therapeutic areas, including trauma, depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, stress management, self-esteem, interpersonal relationships, ADHD, behavioral addictions, as well as spirituality issues. A Florida native, she holds multiple degrees, including a bachelor's in education and philosophy, a Master's of Arts in Professional Counseling and Marriage and Family Therapy, and a Ph.D. in Psychology. Dr. Angel is also a Florida licensed mental health counselor. She has worked with youth and adolescents for 14 plus years and has worked extensively in women's mental health for the past six years. She has worked in agencies providing mental health services to family and youth at high risk. Dr. Angel is an accomplished psychotherapist who works with children, teens, adults, couples, and families. 
Dr. Angel has advanced training and experience in working with LGBTQ specific individuals and issues. Dr. Angel can help you. Just call for an appointment at 727-501-6557 or online at drangelsdevelopment.com. Dr. Angel Falzoni, support for individuals, couples, and families. 727-501-6557. Prompt professional service is what you will receive when you allow Marsha McAllister of Charles Rittenberg Realty to help find that perfect home or list your home for sale. With over 23 years of experience in the Tampa Bay area, you will enjoy a smooth transaction from start to finish. Call Marsha today at 727-417-0707. Now is a great time to buy or sell a home. Call Marsha McAllister at 727-417-0707. This is the Tan Talk Radio Network. All right. Welcome back to the second part of Go Yard Tonight. That's what friends are for. What a good old song. I know, right? Yeah. And I think that brings us back to a sentimentality, you mm -hmm. know, sentimentally. It's hard to break relationships when there's the sentimental ties. You know what I mean? Oh, yes, absolutely. It's very hard to... I mean, just hearing that song, I mean, you know, it makes you not want to ever get rid of a friend, right? Sure. <laughs> That's what friends are for. They're there. Sure. On your when side we have healthy more. relationships. Right. Yeah, we, you know, we could but rewrite those lyrics. That's the but... whole thing, right? Right. It's healthy versus not functioning well. Exactly. And Hurtful. so... You know, when we're in these, you know, a lot of times they're in family dynamics, but it can also happen in friendships, you know, especially long-term friendships, people we've known, you know, most of our lives. Oh, and, yeah. you know, we feel this obligation to maintain this relationship because, well, I've known them for 10 or 15 or 30 or 40 or whatever, fill in the blank years that is, but they're causing us harm. They're not healthy, but we still feel this obligatory factor to these relationships okay so let's talk about deal breakers to relationships whether they're friends or a personal relationship or just family or somebody at work somebody you usually hang out with go out with whatever what are deal breakers you just said one right there causing harm sure explain that sure so when a relationship is causing us either physical emotional or mental harm in some way it's not a healthy relationship the very first series we did in 2014, mm -hmm. on this on September of, of 2014, our first series was on domestic violence, right? Sure it was, yes. It was, because there was a football player at that time was, yeah, and a lot of, was making a lot of news, and we kind of started off with that whole thing. And we talked for a few weeks about how people go around that circle, right? And they just keep, they, things get a little better and they think it's going to be okay. And Right. And, and that the cycle, cycle works for any cycle. kind of unhealthy relationship. Yeah. It doesn't have to go to this violence phase. Um, cycle of abuse? Yeah. I mean, it's just cycle of unhealthiness, abuse. Oh, you can okay. fill in whatever you want. But they do. They kind of have this where, like, um, we go through this cycle of, like, I, things are okay, feeling good. And then, like, this tension kind of starts building and then maybe they're they drop the ball they do something that causes us harm there's a betrayal or they beat you or they, they talk terrible to you or they cheat on about you, or, you or, yeah. to other people right. or whatever it is they're doing something that causes some kind of harm to you and then you feel really hurt but then oh, all of a sudden oh they might show up and do something really nice for you or something like come help you clean your house or whatever it is that makes you feel this help. Oh, it's going to be okay. They didn't really mean that. And we kind of overlook it and make an excuse for it. Absolutely. And that can be in a uh, physical relationship, a friendship, oh, whatever any kind it can of relationship be, right? Can hit in that There's cycle. a blow up. They're mm -hmm. mean. They're nasty. They say bad things. They, they call you mean name or right. something. And sure. I don't want to you in my life and blah, blah, blah. And then there's the cooling off period. Mm -hmm. And then they come with their gifts and candy. Whatever that might look like. Spending whatever time that with might you be. Or right. doing something special for you. Sure. Isn't that a cycle that a lot of people go through? And so therefore it's very hard to let go of toxic relationships. Really, we should call this when to let go of toxic relationships well sure because, because that's toxic if you are in a a relationship of any kind that has that cycle going on 
and now you're everything's okay again yeah it's going to be all right and 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 some sometimes people go as far as to tell the relatives i'm getting a divorce this time i'm doing that and then a week later are you getting a divorce no Oh, absolutely. And you hear they're on that, the other side yeah, of the they, cycle. They've come through the other side of the cycle. Right. Uh, and, and no matter what kind of relationship it can go with or jobs, like you can just put anything in that, that cycle and, right. it, and it happens. And, and what we do is we, we want to believe the best and we, we ignore, we ignore the things we shouldn't be ignoring and we stay in these toxic and it makes us feel bad. But a lot of po times people do the calculation, well, it's better than being by myself. It's better than being lonely. I'd rather be with an abuser than to be living by myself and raising these kids. Sure. Or, I, you know, I can't imagine my life without these people in my life or whatever because they're my, they're my family. They're my blood. They're my yeah, and, whatever. And especially when it's your blood family, mm -hmm. right? It's very hard to let go of toxic relationships in a blood family. And, and, you know, and I want to kind of preface this. I want to step back a minute because when we're talking about letting go, it, letting go can be for a time period or letting go can be forever. Like there's different degrees of what we have to let go. Sometimes we just have to let go, take a break. We need to do healing and the work to build the boundaries and we can re-enter a relationship. They Maybe might even not graduate. Right, and be able to maintain it with good boundaries, even though they still may not be the healthiest person. Right. But we can, a lot of times, do work ourselves. That's yes. what I hear you saying. And then we are better able to set that boundary. Then we can handle that. We, we know where the realistic expectations are in this relationship. Um, we know what their boundaries need to be, and we're able to follow through with that. That helps to keep us emotionally and physically safe. Right. Let's say that that person on the other side of the relationship is a relative of yours who is very controlling and always telling you what to do. Mm -hmm. So when you take that break, so to speak, mm -hmm. and you begin to get help for yourself to get stronger and know when to to say, you know what, I, I can't get into that with you, mom, or whoever, Absolutely, the right, yes. I can't discuss my husband with you today. I just can't, I don't want to talk about that. And then that other person is going, rah, 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 you need to hear what I have to say, right? Right. But and, when we have healthy boundaries, we're able to say, oops, you know, gotta I got to go. go. I'll gotta talk go. to you later. Right. And they end it and they take themselves out of it before it becomes destructive and, so and toxic. We're not saying in this series when to let go that you have to shut down all relationships. No, it's not, not at all. This doesn't mean that we're kicking all these people out of our life, kicking them to the curve, and we're never to have anything to do with them again. Some relationships we need to do that with, and they're, that's just absolutely where they're at. And some of them we need to kind of put a pause button, step out of it, and get do some of that work ourselves. I think this show is turning into healthy boundaries. Well, it kind of is because, because it is, isn't it? Because we don't plan this. And we so don't, but it is. <laughs> as, as it just flows. But when enough is enough is when right. it's causing us harm. Yes, when it's causing when us harm. When you think if this person moved across the, I don't know, 30 hours away from you and you feel relief, that's a really <laughs> good sign that this relationship is causing you harm. You laugh, but you know what? It's true. It's true. I know. I know. It is. Yeah. So then you know, okay, wait a minute. I need to work on this. This is, yeah. This and is... a lot of times when people say, oh, I need to work on this, like I can recognize this is not <laughs> healthy. This is not okay. They think the other person has to do all the changing. Oh, yeah. So then if I'm blaming them and they have to do all the changing, then I, I'm powerless, right? Right. And that's not the case but at the all. But the truth is we are the ones that control our boundaries. We do. We and do. And people cannot cross our boundaries unless we let them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first one, this, this is just developing as we're talking, these deal breakers uh, causing harm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to propose that the second one is somebody that breaks your trust. Oh, trust breaker is a big one, yes. Would you just blah, 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 describe and explain? I said them both in one word, and it's called explain. <laughs> no, I, yes. Go ahead. Um, so when someone breaks their trust, that can happen in so many ways. It, it can be somebody who shares intimate and personal information about you to people oh, that yes. shouldn't, oh, don't need to know that information. Yes. Right. You know, they share your secrets or your personal information. Uh, it could be a, um, a betrayal of that. It can be when they're angry, they're using the, your hurts as a weapon back at you. I feel like that's a big oh, trust breaker. Oh, oh, oh yeah. When oh, they say, you know, but, oh, no, you're just like your mother and did it. Like they use all the things they know is going to knife yeah, you right, in the heart. That's right. right. That's yes. a trust breaker. That's a like, trust breaker. Um, 
obviously when we're talking about a marriage or a relationship, anytime, you know, infidelity, like that's, that's a trust, trust breaker. breaker. Yeah. You know, so anytime like that trust is broken. Let's go back to the one before the infidelity. Mm -hmm. When somebody that you trust because you have shared your heart with them, mm -hmm. you've shared your uh, innermost fears or concerns or secrets or whatever you whatever want to call it. Is, it. Sure. And you find out that they are spreading it around your office. Sure. Right. That's a trust breaker. And, and people aren't treating you right. And you got to think, oh, wait a minute. Why are they talk? Why aren't they not wanting to go to lunch with me now? Mm -hmm. And then you find out, oh, my best friend told them about blah, blah, whatever mm -hmm. it is. I mean, fill in the blank. How do you handle that, Dr. Angel? How do you, if you're the victim of a break in trust with somebody that you trusted, Mm -hmm. How should you handle that? Ooh, well, I am putting you on the you spot and me letting spot. you earn your salary. I thank you. I appreciate that. And you're asking <laughs> me a question that I've just gotten to live. So um, first of all, when my trust gets broken like that, I have to hit the pause button. I have to pull back okay. and I have to get a grip of my feelings. Trust is earned and it takes a long time to earn it and a minute to break it. So I have to pull it back and kind okay, of. Okay. So you mean you don't go running to that person? Why did you say that? What are you? No, I'm not going into confrontation. I'm going to oh, step back. Oh, you're not going into confrontation. No. no. See, that's the right answer. You got Thank the right you. answer. I'm glad I handled and, things the right and, way. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, I'm just a little older than you, so I can tell you that's the right answer. But a lot of people will go and confront immediately. Oh, and, and, cause and anger. And, and anger and cause a big uproar in the office either or in the family. That, or they'll start telling everybody what they know about the other them. person that's so kind right. of that tit for tat payback kind of oh, thing oh gosh yes and then so we have petty. this like war happening petty. right yeah this, i call it the sixth grade lunchroom like that's what middle schoolers <laughs> do and it happens all the time in the adult right. world like it adults does. do this all the time it does happen all the time in the adult world but people are they believe that if i just go confront it then it'll rah, 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 rah. well generally speaking that backfires on you in the confronting because people get told how you reacted and lost your temper Absolutely. And now you're now you are the person who was hurt and you feel like the victim have now become the bad person in this situation. And so I believe you have to step back and get a hold of your feelings and your emotions and kind calm of down. calm down, cool off and get some and, logic in it. And so um, how are you reacting to the person who caused all this trouble, though? Are you pretending everything's OK or are you? So I would have, at this point, when I'm cooling off, I would have the least amount of interaction with this person that I could. Exactly. And if I do, I'm going to be pleasant. Yeah. I'm going to be respectful, but I'm not, like, we're not going oh, to hang out. Yeah, we're not, no, no, I no. can't go. I, something's come up. I got right. what came up? No, I, I can't talk about it. Exactly. I'll I can't be go. pleasant and respectful. I'm not going to go out of my way to avoid him, but I'm definitely not going to have personal time with him because I need to step back. And it depends on the relationship where I'll, where I'll go. Um, like, Let's just say friends, really sure. close friends. So. And then at that point, when I got a hold of my, you know, feelings, I would sit down in person, not over text, not over Facebook, Instagram. Oh, but isn't Snapchat. that the biggest <laughs> problem that we see now is that people are very brave on their texts. Oh, my goodness. Yes. And they say all kinds of things. Yes, they do. And I'm going to sit down with this person, <laughs> especially if it's a relationship I value. The worst for me, and I, this has happened to me several times in my life, but how do I say this delicately? That someone decides to tell me what they really think about something when they've had too much to drink, they're sitting at home and they're texting and misspelling everything, but the truth is coming out. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to run as far as I can from that. Yeah. Because, okay, your true feelings are coming out. Yes. And I know some people say, no, when people are drunk, they're not saying their true feelings. But it's been my personal experience that when they are, they are. I don't know. Maybe you disagree no, with I, that. No, I believe that, you know, when those, you know, that substances take down that, you know, those inhibitions and you're, you're getting what they really think and feel in, in and believe opinion, at yeah. some level. Absolutely. I agree with that. And so here's here's the thing. So we kind of have multiple things happening. Yes, so yes, we do. With this relationship, I will sit down and talk to the person face to face and share 
what I know and how that hurt me. And now that relationship is going to be different because that trust has been broken. Right. And so it me, can't be anything but different, it's right? It's going to be different. But for the person who wants to placate mm -hmm. and wants that relationship so bad that they don't do anything, right? Mm -hmm. Then they'll put up with it again and again and, and again and they'll go around the same and... merry go round over and over again. Mm hmm. Absolutely, they do. And so here's the thing, and I know we say this a lot, but we do not have to attend every argument, discussion that we're invited I to. I gotta and write so that down. When people, you know, get <laughs> drunk or or on whatever, and they start texting nonsense or anger and spewing that out, I'm not even responding to that. Mm -hmm. I'm not feeding that. I'm not gonna okay. give it. I'm not defending. I'm not responding, and I'm not feeding. I think that's huge, and I will say I totally agree with that, but I will also say in my younger days, I made, I know you don't even know that I had younger days, but I did, uh, that I made uh, mistakes of not really connecting all the dots, that maybe they were drinking because sure, they said that's they easy. never did. Sure, that's easy to happen. And so I just... And then the apology comes the next morning. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, I read my text and I don't know what I was thinking. I don't even mean that. Blah, 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 blah. Right, until the next time. Until the next time. And then the next time it's worse. Mm -hmm. And then you go, oh. Yeah. Because growing up the way I grew up in a, in a quote, and sheltered environment, really, a mission field and everything, I wasn't around that kind of behavior. My parents were, I was blessed. They were Christian evangelists, missionaries, pastors. I didn't grow up in that kind of environment that a lot of people do. Sure. So I had never seen any of that till young adult mm -hmm. age. And it was like new to me. People really act like that and talk like that. You know, oh, they but then, do. but I'm an exception to the rule, I think, because I think a lot of people grow up in that they grow up in the fight and the, the, the alcohol abuse or the whatever that's well, they grow up in some kind of dysfunction, uh, dysfunctional situation. Yeah. And, it, and it can be caused from all kinds of things. And, but at the heart of these dysfunctional situations and families and, and units is these, be this, those beliefs that you know, these are family, these people are blood, yes. these people, we have to love <laughs> so we, and be a part of them no matter what, we like, let's put bring up it with back whatever, around, right? right? We got to put up with whatever, because well, that's, that's, because that's, that's my dad, that's, and that's who my dad does, and he does that stuff, and says all that, and right. tells me I'm not his, and all that kind of stuff. I've heard that so many times mm -hmm. in pastoral counseling. Mm -hmm. My dad was drunk, and he told me I'm not really his kid. You know, I can't mm -hmm. tell you how many times I've heard that. And and this leaves scars, Big right? Scars, right. You know, um, but for the person out there who's going, gosh, you guys are all over the map. I feel like we're all over the map right now, but we are, we're on this right here. Deal breakers to relationships where something has to change. Yes. Not necessarily that it has to end your relationship, but there has to be some change. There has to be change, and that change needs to come in the form of a pause usually pause okay when we've had a big deal breaker when trust has been broken when it's causing us harm like those are yeah those are those moments we've got to step back we have to do the change in us we can't expect the change to come from the other person no we can't. it has to come from us right. now when we re-enter that relationship it may look a little different because we've set different limits and boundaries and expectations um but we have to do that work within us. But a lot of people do not realize if they're on the other end that you're changing and you're not going to accept what you used to accept, right? Sure. And, and people are it always going to push those lines and it does take time, but that's where we have to learn how to protect our boundaries. I don't have to continue a conversation when I'm feeling getting yelled at and feeling disrespected and cursed at and called names. I'm not staying on the other end of that conversation. If it's in person or if it's on the phone, I'm taking myself out of that. I don't have to listen to that. But does I've, that make sense? It does. But I've known people that describe something like this when they're 
they've come in and they're trying to get help with it and what they describe well then what did you do when this thing this meltdown happened so to speak and you were called all these names or you were hit you were hurt or you were whatever well it's okay now but i just don't feel that great about it but it's better it's that mm -hmm. going back and taking it because it's like I'm taking one for the team, you know. Well, it kind of is, but I, I, and I know we've we keep bringing this around, but I think it's because we learn early on that people, certain people, can do whatever they want. That's and it. We're supposed right to there. keep them in our we're lives. We're supposed and to then do it. We yes. take that outside our families and also bringing it into friendships and spouses and work relationships that are unhealthy and they're toxic. And we're supposed to keep this person in our life for whatever other, like we keep projecting that same belief system into other relationships mm -hmm. and that's where we get stuck and having a lot of relationships that are making us that aren't healthy for us and we're feeling bad about ourselves we lose our confidence we you know and this is where we have a lot of people really struggling don't you think a lot of people get right back into the same thing again i mean i've heard this for years you can tell me as a therapist you, you marry a guy becomes an, or a woman becomes an alcoholic, you have a terrible relationship, blah, blah, blah. You get divorced and you meet somebody and you go back right around the same circle you go around the again. Same bend. Why do people do that? Because it's we familiar. Don't learn from it's the... a relational pattern they okay. know. It's codependency too, isn't it? Well, yes, but it's a familiar thing. And so, and that's what I'm saying. We take yeah. this familiar concept in our family, which yeah. is not healthy. You know, just because somebody is our mother, our father, our child, our aunt, our uncle, our grandparent does not give them the right to hurt us. Right. No. And us keep them in this active part of our lives. Um, that part is earned by trust and protection and love. And that's what love does. And so we take that same familiar concept and we take it into our romantic relationships and our friendships and our work relationships and we're dealing with a lot of times if you really talk to people you'll hear the same theme at the core in a lot of their relationships oh absolutely you do mm -hmm. hear the same theme what is the same theme the same theme is i feel guilty if i say no i feel guilty if i don't help them i feel guilty if i don't answer the phone every time if they if i call. don't give them money every time they ask right and I, mean, and I know I, they're using it for drugs, but I just feel guilty if I don't give it to them because they ask me and it's my child. So they have this ingrained, <sighs> you know, false belief that they owe all these people whatever it is that they have to get, what they're giving. And we don't owe that to people. Whoa, we got to go on with that next week because mm -hmm. there's a lot here that we owe. We owe this, that, and what is it we owe? Wow. Yeah, we've only just begun. Kind of stressed. I think this is really an important topic, though, because why? Why is this such an important topic? So many. I think it spans so oh, many problems itches. that bring people oh. in into therapy or cause the people their relational pain. And relational pain is oh, it's, huge. It's huge. If That's... it's family of origin, family I live with, friends, coworkers, spouse, whatever. There's relational pain in a lot of people's lives oh, right I now. Oh, I. Totally think that is so true. And part of it is because we don't know when to let go and we don't know what enough is enough. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good place to start next week. Mm -hmm. We don't know when enough is enough. Okay. It's good I'm taking notes because we forget, don't we? I'm glad the week. you're taking notes. Thank <laughs> you for taking the notes. And but... so, mm, sum up what we've talked about tonight, Dr. Angel. Boy, this hour has gone very, very quickly as it always does, but we always have a great time. Go ahead. So no, uh, first of all, I'm going to sum up in a lot of ways. So I want you to kind of think about the relationships in your life. And if you think about this person um, relocating and it makes you feel relieved, or if you, you know, you think about when I, I the phone rings and I see that person's name on my phone, I get that lump in my gut like, like yeah. those are the <laughs> indicators that this is an unhealthy relationship and it's causing you harm at some level right and so like take a look at that let's mm -hmm. like really look at what's going on with that and what is the belief you have about this relationship like do i believe i owe them this because they gave me life um, I hear that all the time, like, oh, well, they gave me life and took care of me. I owe them for the rest of my life. No, you, you didn't ask to be born. Right. Right. So, like, we don't owe. It's not. But that duty. That, it that is. That duty, duty and is obligatory huge, is, is huge. 
got to write that word down because that's where a lot of people, oh, we've been married 84 years, so I'm not going to get divorced now. Well, yeah, well, I would. I get that, you know. Of course, if it is 84 years. I was about to say. Yeah, it. might as well just tough it out. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because after all, 84 years. Is no, but I know what you're saying. And so we need to just kind of take a look at what's driving that. What was your relationship like in your family of origins? What did you think? What did mm -hmm. you believe? What did you grow up seeing? Um, and how is that impacting your life now? Absolutely. We got a lot to talk about next week. We're excited about that. And we are excited about our raise. Now, you say, why am I bringing them up again? Because, guys, we need to support our home team. Yes, we do. And they are doing phenomenally. And, I mean, it's a joy to watch them. And I try to catch as many games as I can. And, guys, support our hometown. And the Lightning are doing great. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Tampa Bay, we got it We're going on. We're on fire. We are Super on Bowl fire. champs and everything. We got it going on. So go yard means hitting a home run in life. And that's what we're all about here on this show every week. We want you to be the best you you can become. And so it's always a joy. Do you have some final words you'd like to say here? we got about a minute. No, well, stay tuned. Come back next week so we can continue this talk of when to let go and when enough is enough. I think it's going to get even deeper, deeper, don't you think? Yeah. Yes, it is. Wow. So we'd love to hear from you. You can actually email us with questions, goyard2014 at gmail.com. Or on Facebook, just go there because it's right there, tonight's show. Put some questions there, and Dr. Angel will be happy to answer those as only she can do. Um, and um, it's been good. It's, it's been, been great. really good. So we are Go Yard, and you are who? Dr. Angel. And I am Mama Mac, and we'll see you next week. God bless you. Have a good week. Good night.